the most rare and the largest deals are the strategic ones. And so this is where you are augmenting your business in a deeply strategic way in order to go after a new market. And so I would put the Crashlytics deal in this bucket because Twitter didn't really have a strong developer platform. They know they needed one. They wanted to buy not just technology. That wouldn't have uh, particularly helped them. They wanted to buy an entire product and a market and a brand within the developer community in order to go pursue that space. And so we've done a whole bunch of these deals. Periscope falls into this camp. Telepart falls into this camp. Mopub falls into this camp. And so these are sort of the bigger name deals that you hear about and read about. And what's interesting is how these happen. And so on the aqua hire and technology side, it's typically the startup approaches Twitter. So we canvass the space, and we're sort of aware of what's going on. But ultimately, it's the startup's decision that it's time to go look for suitors. And they would approach big companies and see if there's a match. On the strategic side, it's almost entirely the opposite. And it's us on the product side at a large company thinking about where we need to go and where we should make an investment. And that's when we canvas a space, look at all the potential uh, players, and then try to meet with them and understand who would be the best fit. And so what does this process actually look like? It starts, of course, with a call, as I talked about uh, when they called us. It goes on, if that goes well, to a strategy meeting with the founders. Uh, we really want to understand where they're coming from, what they want to build, what kind of team they build. Um, if that goes well, we move it on to a tech talk. So we bring in a bunch of the lead engineers and really understand what they've built and how they've built it. Um, it's fascinating understanding all the different architectures that companies are using today. And some we like better. Some would match better with Twitter's infrastructure and some wouldn't. And so it's always a great discussion to understand the trade-offs they've made. If that goes well, we move on to interviews. And in almost every case, we ideally want to interview the entire team. Um, and again, it's because cultural fit is so important. And then finally, it, winds, it comes down to, of course, the negotiation. And so what we're looking for here is we're really looking for alignment and culture. This is not just a thing to care about from the startup side. This is a thing that the big companies, and Twitter particularly, cares deeply about. And we spend most of our time making sure that we're only bringing in people who we think will be successful within Twitter and within the culture that we have. We, of course, want strong technology. There are tons of different ways to solve problems. And we're looking for a really elegant, really powerful, really scalable approach to solving problems. We're looking for a great team. I'd say this is actually where most of the uh, deals fall through. Is It turns out, as we interview everyone, of course, there's going to be amazing people and weaker people. And it comes down to the percentages. And so ultimately, we have to make a really tough call that if there's too few great people on a team, we can't justify bringing the entire team into the company. And so as you go and start your companies and build your teams, really focus on assembling the best group of people you can to put yourselves in a position of success here.